you know, there's so many thoughts that go through your mind at that moment. But one of those was that I don't want to be pulled out of the rubble. I know how many how many stories my building is, and I know that if, if it collapsed, I'm on the first floor. Senior TV producer Ayad Basma provided the world with some of the very first images of the devastation caused when almost 3,000 tons of ammonium nitrate ignited at the Beirut port. The explosion has claimed over 170 lives, injured 6,000 and left a quarter of a million homeless. Ayad, you were flung to the floor, you were hit by flying glass and debris. You must have been scared, you must have been confused, but you got your pictures and your footage out to Reuters clients pretty much before anybody else. How did you do that? This is the first time I realized that, you know, what, what I do, it kind of comes instinctively to me uh, at times like this. I guess it must have been prior experience maybe, but I've never been in a situation where I myself have been hurt. I've been in situations where I've been close to it or escaped it kind of by a hairline but I've never been in a situation where along with the thousands and thousands of people who were there at that moment, I will forever be one of those who physically and mentally experienced it as it unfolded. What I know is that I kind of was saw a smoke through the glass windows of the buildings that are just, you know, I, you know behind them there's the port and the, the next thing I know there's like a big red light uh, or red smoke. Uh, and that was what I was filming at the moment. And then I just know that I was just kind of flew off to the ground. The moment between when I was flung and like uh, on the floor, it was five minutes and I was start, started filming in the street. And basically like, it was like, uh, you get flung in the floor, you realize you didn't, you're not dead, you get up and you know you have function, you know, so, sort of. Um, and then you kind of get your things together because at that moment I wasn't really very decent. Um, and then I just pray to God, pray to whoever, I need to have my phone because I couldn't find my phone in all of the mess that used to be my place. As soon as I got a phone call, I knew where my phone is. I established that my colleagues were okay and I just walked down to the street. And it was just, I was walking, I was filming, what used to be the entrance to my building, what used to be my neighborhood, my neighbors in complete shock. Um, and they were like also afraid that another explosion was gonna happen. You know, there's so many thoughts that go through your mind at that moment. But one of those was that I don't want to be pulled out of the rubble. I don't want to be one of those, you know, victims from, you know, the countless times I've seen videos from the Syria war where like, there's like, to, you know, people being just carried with like rubble on, on their face. I, I was like, I'm I, like, I know how many, how many stories my building is. And I know that if, if it co collapsed, I'm on the first floor. I know as well um, that the, the Reuters Bureau was destroyed. You were at home yes. at the time, but the Reuters Bureau was destroyed. How, how hard is it to file in a situation like this? I imagine well, all protocol is thrown out of the window, right? You don't know what's happened. You don't know what the cause of this was. And then um, you don't know how, where your colleagues are and how they're doing. Connection is really bad. The next, I mean, obviously where we converged was the bureau chief's house um, and uh, and his house was also like the same. I know you, you a, a day later or so, you went down to the scene of the explosion and there's a huge yeah. 100 meter crater there. We spent, I think, about three or four hours just going through the complete, you know, devastation that was the port. Everything was just a mangled wreckage. And the most, you know, I think for me, like for me and for my colleague who are filming is that, you know, Lebanon has been suffering from like a financial crisis. Everybody's just on edge for many, many months. And like food and hyperinflation is like top of everybody's mind. And, you know, the price of bread, you know, we'll be able to eat, whatever. And then we get, we get there and we see like the silos destroyed and there is all that grain gone. Yeah. And let me, and let me, let me f finish off by asking you this. What is the mood like on the streets? How delicate is it? How precarious is it now? 
Well, this, so this is it. everybody who asks me, asks me how I am and, you know, asks about the people of the city. And obviously we're all go kind of going through the same thing right now. And it is just like kind of going from a moment of complete resignation, just completely losing hope in this country and that it's ever going to, you know, come out of it. And then there is the sense of like, no, we're not going to accept this. It's almost like if you've lived in Lebanon for long enough, it wasn't really functioning. Like, it, it, what, like and you know, and now, you know, whatever point we, we came to before the explosion was a point where all of, you know, everything got stuck in the wheel, you know, because all of the past mistakes, you know. And uh, right now there's like this feeling of resignation, this complete desperation. We just want to get out mm -hmm. because we want to live a normal, decent life. And then there is the, and then there is the no, there is the, we're gonna stay, we're going to rebuild. Yeah. Are, you know, we've been through this, we've been through a version, obviously no one's been through this, but we've been through a version of this and like, we're gonna stay. All right. I, 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 honestly, yeah. I don't know which one I am. All right, I, 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 look, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. I know these are uh, uh, traumatic times and thank you for your uh, your pictures uh, and your video and do uh, stay safe. Uh, thanks very much indeed.